just wanted to share with you a really, really quick haul of the stuff I got uh, in Vienna. So the these Van Gogh pens are actually a gift and it's just some of my favorite colors. There is Carmine, which is a gorgeous pink. I will swatch it in a second for you because I also bought for myself uh, a tube to refi refill my uh, pan that is getting uh, really, really, uh, I'm getting really low on it. I started with a half pan from Van Gogh. I bought it. These are super affordable here in Europe. I don't know if you can get them in other places, but in Europe they are really, really affordable. Um, this is kind of like a student grade line. It has a more limited uh, color range and it uses pigments that are um, kind of cheaper on the pigment price scale. And I don't like all of their colors. I don't like any colors that uh, try to be uh, expensive pigments, but they're uh, single pigments and they're like, um, yeah, they have some really, really good options and they have really cute sets if you want to kind of try new things. So for that reason, I really like them. And uh, these are a few of my favorites that I'm going to send to a friend. So we have Carmine, we have Dusk Pink, we have Dusk Green and Dusk Yellow. Dusk Green is not um, my personal favorite. It looks like this. It's kind of a, a, a bluish green with a black granulation, like all of the Dusk colors. The pigments are PK11 which is black, and PG7, which is phthalo green, so you can very easily mix it, but um, I think it's a nice color and I think my friend will like it, that's why I got it for her. And for myself, I got the Cobalt Violet from Rembrandt. I got it in a pen um, form. I don't think they have uh, full pens, which is quite a shame. Also Van Gogh, they don't have full pens. I uh, really wish they would do that. And I just want to see how the formulation is different from the tube. The tube paint is okay. Um, it's much better than many others that I've tried. The color is great. Uh, it does have a bit more binder than I would like, but that is a cobalt violet issue. And that's why I want to see how the pan behaves. But I'll, I think I'll finish this first. And then all of these are ref refills. I have from colors that are currently in my palette. I have the Lucas Naples Yellow Reddish, which I am obsessed with. I have here a full pan that is almost gone. The Rembrandt French Ultramarine, I still have quite a bit in my palette and uh, probably one more refill in uh, in the older tube, but I don't know when I'll be at the art store next time and they have the large Rembrandt tubes. Uh, Jackson's, for example, only have the 10 milliliter tubes. These are 20, yeah, 20 mils. So I just picked it up because I use French Ultramarine all the time and I know I'll run out of it. I got Dusk Yellow um, to replace or replenish my Van Gogh Dusk Yellow. Um, I just want to see if actually they use the same pigments. I should have probably checked this in store. Yeah, they do. So, yeah, it's probably cheaper just to get the Van Gogh version. Um, but I will uh, compare these two and see if it's worth to spend the extra dollars. Although this is a larger tube, so it's a bit more economical. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that it's still more expensive than getting two Van Gogh tubes. Um, I should have checked that in store. I got the Van Gogh Carmine. I would have totally upgraded to Rembrandt Carmine, but it's different Carmines. And this one is just gorgeous. I'll show it to you in a sec. Um, this has light fast ratings, it says here three, which I think is actually their best. I remember that in the pamphlet, it was actually marked as two, which is like a good, light fastness, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Uh, anyway, it's it's not fugitive. It's not a fugitive color. So it's 
better than all of my other favorite pinks. <laughs> and then I also bought a Daniel Smith uh, Cascade Green. That's the color here. I had a small tube that I bought when I was, I wanted to review the Jean Haynes set. This is included in the set. It's a gorgeous green. It's also nothing special. The pigments are raw sienna and phthalo blue. So you could totally mix this by yourself, but I don't use raw sienna or phthalo blue. So I don't want to put them in my uh, palette just so I can mix this anytime I want exactly this color. Um, so this is a convenience color for me. And then these ones I thought I would test uh, because they looked interesting. So these are, it's nothing, you know, innovative, even though they say innovative acrylic, but this, this stuff has been around for ages, uh, especially if you're a crafter, uh, you know these things. It's a 3D liner. Uh, what I liked here are the colors. So this is kind of my, <laughs> like my radiant orchid dream color. And then this one is, what are you called? You are called Flesh Ochre. And then this one is Quinacridone Pink. And both of these has white, have white, you can see the kind of pastel Like I would consider using these, the, the way that I would use them is for accents on watercolor pieces. I think it would be fun to add that dimension. These are supposed to be 3D. And what I also thought is I print my watercolors on canvas, meaning I use a service and I also offer it uh, on my shop, but I scan, uh, I do like a high resolution scan of my uh, artwork and then I offer it on canvases. And I also ordered one for myself to test it. It looks beautiful. The colors really translate well and you can also get the, the texture that you get on watercolor paper. It all shows up really, really well on canvas. I really like that. But I thought adding these would look uh, really cool and kind of give it the, the look of, you know, a hand painted painting as opposed to just like a print on canvas. So that was another thought that I have. And wait, I'll show you the one that I have. So this is the print that I ordered from uh, my artwork. Um, this I'm considering this piece for the spring collection in my shop. And I really, I love how it turned out. Uh, the video is not enhanced. The colors are not enhanced. It is really this vibrant and beautiful. I just love how it looks. So this is mounted on a really thick piece of uh, wooden frame. It's, it's just lovely. And I don't know. <laughs> I might order another one because I don't want to ruin it, but you can see how well these colors look with this. And I thought like adding some of these accents would be fun. And let me know. I'm also considering doing a class that involves, you know, painting a watercolor painting and then using it to create uh, different products, like for example, a canvas uh, print, and then enhancing it. I, I think this whole combination is really, really cool because I love painting with watercolors. I love the medium. I love the way that they look. You can't get this kind of look with any other medium. And I love working on paper and not on canvas. Uh, however, like this kind of canvas print that is ready to hang and already mounted on uh, with this beautiful like gallery wrap uh, format, it gives you other options and you can come in and add paint and accents or things like, you know, for example, like a gold uh, accents, you could add to this very easily. So let me know if this is something that sounds interesting to you because I'm really, really considering it as a class. I think it would be really fun. Uh, my only kind of con against something like this is it, it takes time. And I think a lot of us want that immediate satisfaction. You know, you sign up to a course, you just want to do everything. And in this case, we would have to paint, then order it, then wait <laughs> for it to arrive. <laughs> but uh, I still, I just, I think there are so many options that kind of take painting with watercolors beyond that piece of paper. And I really would like to explore it in a class. And I think it would be a lot of fun and uh, kind of, 
you know, use one medium and then turn it into something different. And yeah, my, my kind of vision is to also figure out how to use string. Uh, I have to see, I'll probably just order a couple more of these and see if I can easily uh, stitch these. I just think it's, it could be so much fun to play around with this. So love, love, love how this turned out. These are so my colors. You can see the pinks, the violets with a pop of yellow. Lovely, okay. I just wanna show you the colors that I bought before we end this video. And I have them all in my palette. As I said, it's all uh, refills of existing colors. I've shown them a million times before. So uh, if you already know them, uh, feel free to skip this part. This is the Lucas paint. Uh, I will link you to this gorgeous water container. I can't show you the sides, but that this like Chinese blue uh, porcelain china kind of print. It's just gorgeous. So this is the Lucas. Let's do now the uh, Rembrandt French ultramarine. I love it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous, intense uh, ultramarine. It's not a unique color. Every brand makes it. This is a unique color, in my opinion. I haven't found anything uh, really similar. I'll tell you the pigments. The pigment is PR176 and PBR24. So a red and a brown together. Interesting. I thought this would have white in it. Hmm. Anyway, it's uh, lovely. And yeah, the French Ultramarine is just gorgeous. Other brands make it, uh, but I really like this version. It's also very uh, affordable and I can get a nice large tube and it is a European brand. Uh, someone wrote me that they don't think it's a European brand anymore, uh, Royal Talents, uh, they are Dutch. Uh, they are owned by Sakura, but as far as I know, you know, they still operate from the Netherlands and the uh, products are made in the Netherlands. So they have like a parent company, but um, I, I still would consider them a European brand and at least the watercolors are made in uh, Europe. So this is Dusk Yellow. Uh, this is the Van Gogh version. Let's, whoops, let's see if there's actually a difference. Because the pigments are exactly the same. Um, it looks more intense, but that's because it's directly from the tube. The Dusk Pink version of Van Gogh has a different pigment from the Rembrandt one. This I know, but these are the same pigments. They look exactly the same to me. I wouldn't, um, I should have checked. If I checked I and the price is cheaper, I would have picked up the, the Van Gogh version. I don't think there's any justification here to pay extra for the Rembrandt brand. And the last one is Cascade Green. Oh, that's not the last one. There's Carmine. Cascade Green, which we said is just raw sienna and uh, phthalo blue, but I love it. And I think uh, they got the mixture just perfect. So I'm sticking with it. Uh, this is the Van Gogh Carmine. Gorgeous, gorgeous, luminous pink. Uh, it looks redder on screen. In reality, it's pinker. And I'll just show you how it looks next to quinacridone rose so you get an idea. I think that's the closest color that I have in my palette. So this is quinacridone rose from Daniel Smith, if you're familiar. You can see how these two look next to each other. This one is more vibrant and it is warmer. And this one is a little bit bluer than this. So I hope that helps you uh, see. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will link everything here. Uh, everything that I can find, I will link it below. And I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.